Welcome to the congregation of Yahweh. We're here on Yom Teruah, uh, Yahweh's Sabbath day. Greetings to those on the internet. We hope you enjoy the messages uh, that go out. Um, today's message is going to be on Yom Teruah and on uh, the also known as the Feast of Trumpets. Um, for ancient Israel, uh, the significance of their feasts uh, some were memorials to remember past events. Some were uh, this particular feast. They were just told to blow the trumpet. And uh, for those of us that have uh, received the Spirit and believe the second part of the book, we see a future significance of the trumpet. And there's numerous things throughout Scripture where a trumpet is involved. And I, I think a lot of those things could possibly have a, uh, a relationship with that, that future trumpet. And I want to read uh, a few verses on the commandment itself in Leviticus 23. But we're going to dig into... Uh, you know future significance and also draw some of the illustrations in the front of the book that kind of line up with things in the back of the book Leviticus 23 and verse 25 but I well actually I'll start off at the front the introduction to the chapter 23 verse 1 and Yahweh spake unto Moses saying speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them concerning the feasts of Yahweh which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations even these are my feasts so that's the introduction uh, some believe there's only three feasts some believe that everything in this chapter is a feast but you know the introduction to this chapter is these are my feasts now if we skip down to verse 25 I'm sorry, verse 24. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, you shall have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein, but you shall offer an offering made by fire to Yahweh. Period. Didn't say why. Just said do it. Also in uh, Numbers 29. Numbers chapter 29 and verse 1. And in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have an holy convocation. You shall do no servile work. It is a day of blowing the trumpets unto you. Period. No explanation. Also in uh, Nehemiah. Nehemiah. Uh, Nehemiah chapter 8 starting in verse 1 <clears throat> and all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the street that was before the water gate and they spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses which Yahweh had commanded to Israel and Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation both of men and women and all that could hear with understanding upon the first day of the seventh month and he read therein before the street that was before the water gate from the morning until midday before the men and the women and those that could understand and the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law so from morning until midday they read the book of the law on this day on the day of trumpets the seventh month first day of the month in Numbers chapter 10, let's flip back, sorry. Just keep in mind, on that, on that day, they read the law. I'm going to uh, 
paint a picture of, of the last trumpet here, but I'm going to use some of the scriptures found in the Old Testament of things that tie in of, of what's going to happen at the last trumpet. And so far we've covered the reading of Torah. Numbers chapter 10, verse 1. Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Make thee two trumpets of silver, of a whole piece shalt thou make them, that thou mayest use them for calling the assembly, and for the journeying of the camps. And when they shall blow with them, all the assembly shall assemble themselves to thee at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And if they blow but with one trumpet, then the prince princes which are heads of the thousands of Israel shall gather themselves unto thee. When you blow an alarm, then the camps that lie on the east parts shall go forward. When you blow an alarm the second time, then the camps that lie on the south side shall take their journey. They shall blow an alarm for their journeys. But when the congregation is to be gathered together, you shall blow, but you shall not sound an alarm. And the sons of Aaron, the priests, shall blow with the trumpets, and they shall be to you for an ordinance forever throughout your generations. And if you go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresseth you, then you shall blow an alarm with the trumpets, and you shall be remembered before Yahweh your Elohim, and you shall be saved from your enemies. Now, I said that all these things didn't have a direct relationship, but through the scriptures we do know that there's going to be a day of victory at the return of the king, and it's also going to be a day of sorrow, and we're going to get into that. But here, blow the trumpet before you go into war to be saved from your enemies. And then in verse 10, also in the day of your gladness. And in your solemn days and in the beginnings of your months, you shall blow with the trumpets over your burnt offerings and over your sacrifices of your peace offerings, that they may be to you a memorial before your Elohim. I am Yahweh your Elohim. Um, also, uh, several places in Scripture, at the blowing of the trumpet is when a king... Uh, takes the throne. In 2 Samuel 2 Samuel Why is this interesting? Because at the sound of the last trump the king is returning to take the throne. Um, 2 Samuel 15 and verse 10 But Absalom sent spies throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, As soon as you hear the sound of the trumpet, then you shall say, Absalom reigneth in Hebron. And when, uh, that was the only verse that I wanted to read there. Skipping over to uh, 2 Kings chapter 9. Second Kings 9 and 12 and they said it is false tell us now and he said thus and thus spake he to me saying thus saith Yahweh I have anointed thee king over Israel then they hasted and took every man his garment and put it under him on the top of the stairs and blew the trumpets saying Jehu is king and uh, backtrack to 1st Kings chapter 1 1 Kings chapter 1 and verse 34. And let Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet anoint him their king over Israel and blow ye with the trumpet and say, El save King Solomon. Then you shall come up after him that he may come and sit upon my throne and he shall be king in my stead and I have appointed him to be ruler over Israel and over Judah and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada answered the king and said Amen Yahweh Elohim of my sovereign the king say so too as Yahweh have been with my sovereign the king even so be he with Solomon to make his throne greater than the throne of my sovereign King David 
So Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet and Benai the son of Jehoiada and the Cherethites and the Pelethites went down and caused Solomon to ride upon King David's mule and brought him to Gihon. And Zadok the priest took an horn of oil out of the tabernacle and anointed Solomon and they blew the trumpet and all the people said, El save King Solomon. So that's just a few uh, references of the blowing of the trumpet and, and anointing the the king. Um, also, well, let's let's go over. To, I'm going to come back to a few of these verses here in a minute. I want to go to uh, Matthew 24. Matthew 24, starting in verse 29. This is the Messiah. They asked him, you know, when, what's the signs of these things? What's going to happen? And he's answering their questions here. Uh, Matthew 24, verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other so another thing to keep in mind as we read through scripture and, and compare these things at the sound of the trumpet there's also going to be a gathering so a king is coming the Torah is going to be read and there's going to be a gathering of his people now something that ties in real close with this is the Sinai story the people cleansing themselves getting ready for the presence don't come near your wives and prepare yourself for his presence sanctify the mountain all the people coming together to hear what his Torah the reading of the Torah out of Yahweh's own mouth uh, and then also in that story we see the sound of the trumpet and they said we don't want to hear this is this is too much why don't you let him talk to you and you just tell us what he said but this also ties in with the last trumpet these things are allegorical they they have a close uh, relationship here but continuing on in um, we just read here that it says uh, that the there should be a sign in the heavens and the tribes of the earth shall mourn let's compare that with revelations chapter 6 now the passage that we read talked about things going on in the heavens let's look at 612 and behold, when he had opened the sixth seal, which is right before the seventh, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places, and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every freeman hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and of the wrath of the lamb for the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand and that kind of ties in with people mourning at the sign of his coming. Some people, they're going to know what's going on and they're going to know they haven't been living right. Um, also, you know, I kind of touched on uh, Exodus about the, um, the Torah, about people coming together to the mountain to get ready for his presence and the trumpet blowing. Uh, Isaiah chapter 2 kind of ties in with that. And the verse is also quoted in in Micah, I believe, 
pretty much verbatim. I'm just going to read the, the one in Isaiah 2 and verse um, 1 through 3. The word that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem, and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of Yahweh's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. All the people coming together, the gathering. And many people shall go and say, Come you and let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh, to the house of the Elohim of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. And he shall judge amongst the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not live Lift up a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. So here, in the last days, the mountains established, the nations flow to the mountain to hear of his word, his Torah. And uh, I believe that that's going to happen at the last trumpet. Also, something else that kind of ties in, I'm not going to go through, but you can go back and read the story. The story of Jericho. You've got the priests blowing the trumpets, going around the city, and at the sound of the last trump, it falls. It falls. And in Revelations 11, let's, let's read what happens to the kingdoms of this world at the last trumpet. Revelations 11 starting in verse... And, and by the way, when you read the Revelations, there's a lot of things that go parallel to each other. You've got seven vials, seven seals, seven trumpets. And you'll see like earthquakes and things that line up with these things and there's people that have diagrams and charts and they try to make it all make sense uh, good luck with that but anyway in uh, revelations 11 verse 15 and the seventh angel sounded and there was uh the seventh angel that had the seventh trumpet the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our sovereign and of his messiah and he shall reign forever and ever so at the sound of that last trump, the kingdoms of this world will collapse and a new kingdom will start. And that's what the angel in Luke 1, he said that uh, this child, talking about the Messiah, would be given the throne of David his father and he would rule over Israel forever and of his kingdom there would be no end. And that's what we wait for. We wait for the sound of the last trumpet. We wait for the nations to learn his Torah. We wait for a massive outpouring of the Spirit. We wait for a resurrection. Uh, a few verses on that in 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. Verse 51. 1 Corinthians 15, 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Meaning there will be some people alive at the return. Not everybody's going to die. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians 4 and verse 16. For the Master himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of Elohim, and the dead and Messiah shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Master in there. Notice it says there will be a gathering in the clouds. What did we read in uh, Matthew? It said at the sound of the trump he will gather his elect from the four winds, even from the heavens. This is the regathering that all scripture points forward to and is to take the people back into the land, to the mountain that we read about in Isaiah chapter 2. Um, another thing on resurrection here, John chapter 5. We're going to close out here in just a minute. John chapter 5, starting in verse 25. 
Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of Yahweh, and they that hear shall live. Why did he say, the hour is coming, and now is because those that heard his voice could come out of their spiritual graves but a time in the future when there will be a literal resurrection for as the father hath life in himself so hath he given to the son to have life in himself and he giveth him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man marvel not at this for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of judgment so so far we've seen uh, a, a king being uh, anointed at the blowing of the shofar the blowing of the trumpet we see his Torah being taught now one, uh, one thing I, I forgot to mention before his return we see kings and priests it, it's a group of people that were selected before his coming to reign with him for a thousand years what is the purpose of a king and a priest um, right before the Sinai story. Let's go back to Exodus 18. This kind of just popped up, but um, close out here in just a minute. Right before the giving of the law at Sinai, something interesting happened. And I, I think it's it's it, it ties in with, with what's going on here in um Exodus 18, 17. In the wrong book. That doesn't work. Okay, Exodus 18, 17. And I think what we see right here going on in this story is exactly what Messiah is doing right now, and he's got a purpose for it. 18, 17. And Moses' father-in-law said unto him, The thing that thou doest is not good. Thou wilt surely wear away both thou and this people that is with thee, for this thing is too heavy for thee. Thou art not able to perform it thyself alone. Hearken now unto my voice. I give thee counsel, and Elohim shall be with thee. Be thou for the people towards Elohim, that thou mayest bring the causes unto Elohim. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws, and shalt show them the way wherein they must walk and the work that they must do. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men such as fear Elohim and of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. And let them judge the people at all seasons. And it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto thee, but every uh, small matter they shall judge, so it shall be easy for thyself, and they shall bear the burden with thee. So when we read uh, about about the uh, the law going forth from Zion and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem I think he's going to perform that through his kings and priests that he's training in Torah uh, right before his return um, okay this is where I wanted to close out Ezekiel 37 we're talking about a regathering uh, the teaching of his instructions the coming of the king the regathering of the people the outpouring of the spirit and it's all right here in Ezekiel 37. <laughs> Starting in verse 1. And the hand of Yahweh was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of Yahweh and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about and behold there were very many in the open valley and lo they were very dry and he said unto me son of man can these bones live and I answered O my sovereign Yahweh thou knowest again he said unto me prophesy upon these bones and say unto them O you dry bones hear the word of Yahweh thus that, that is interesting uh, Again he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones, and say unto the bones, say unto the dry bones, hear the word. Dry bones, hear the word of Yahweh. Thus saith my sovereign Yahweh unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, the spirit giveth life, and you shall live, and I will lay sinews upon you, and bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you by the word breath wind and spirit all the same word here in the Hebrew 
they just chose to put which word by the context um, and you shall live and you shall know that I am Yahweh so I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied there was a, and the prophesied was hear the word receive the spirit so I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied there was a noise and behold a shaking and the bones came together, one body, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then, then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy. Now that, man, there's something very interesting that I just, I just grabbed hold of, but I'm, I'm going to hold it for now. That's, man. Okay, 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 okay. I'm, I'm going to spill the beans real quick. It's very interesting that the bones came together as one body. They had flesh on them. They were covered with skin, but they still didn't have the spirit. That's interesting. But anyway, then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind. Thus, you want to know what I was getting at? <laughs> There's a large group of people out there that claim to be the body and they don't have the spirit of truth guiding them into all truth. Are you talking about the wind man? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy son of man and say to the wind, thus saith my sovereign Yahweh, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. One thing that I did catch, and I'm not sure what the connection is, but in Revelations chapter 7, I believe it says, hold back the four winds. Just something to dig into. But anyway, so I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off from our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith my sovereign, Yahweh, behold O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and do what? Bring you into the land of Israel. There's many, many, many scriptures that people like to claim as their own and applying to them, but they leave that part out. There's supposed to be a regathering of the people drawn into the land of Israel, and it's not going to be done by human intervention. The Messiah is, re is returning, and there will be a divine intervention of bringing his people back to the land. And at that time, the law will go forth from Zion, the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem, and he's starting the last day at the last trumpet. Hallelujah.